All right, at Jordan center field, Mike Antico will lead things off as our batting order is brought to you by Capital One. Antico has been terrific in the NCAA tournament, nine games, hitting 400. Then it's Eric Kennedy inserted into the two spot. Zach Zubia and Melendez we talked about. Mitchell Daly, Cam Williams got some speed and some pop. Douglas Hodo, Trey Faltini, the shortstop, and Silas Ardwan, who's very difficult to run against. Speaking of running, 12 stolen bases for Antico. And here is Will Bednar, whose stock value skyrocketed after his last start. Yeah, made himself some money, I would think, and he's got another chance to do it tonight. To draft in a few weeks, Will Bednar is a kid that could find himself moving up into the middle of that first round. 8 1 with a 326. Mid 90s fastball, and he's coming off his best. Best not just this year best career start the biggest question tonight is who has to make the adjustments him or Texas and here we go for his pitch swing and a miss and Tico you'll see fastballs up and the question's going to be will the home plate umpire Billy Billy Van Rappers call that strike will Texas be able to make an adjustment and hit it or lay off it Outside. that's the thing sometimes you just if you can't hit it just lay off it force Bednar to come down in the zone. And Tico 0 for 3 against Bednar last game. He faced him with a pop up and two strikeouts. Two strikes and the Mississippi State infield shifts as they move Cameron James over towards the second base position. Scotty DeBrule moves into that shallow right field position. And we got our first beach ball sighting, so Bednar will have to wait here. A lot more folks actually on the outside waiting to get in here than are currently on the inside watching the game. Weather is cloudy. It's been cool around 70 degrees today. And the one two and that's that high fastball and he picks up strikeout number one. The only way the approach is going to change is if you force it, him to change the approach and, and it starts right here and listen it's I mean it's tough you know he's going to throw you elevated fastballs his intent is to throw him just up and out of the zone and then keep going up as he gets into plus counts first out of the night for Bednar's another strikeout there are the numbers six innings one walk 15 strikeouts and he's got one here already. There have been some other incredibly high strikeout numbers the first one poured in to Eric Kennedy along with Bednar's 15 Chris Benson in 96 whose name you saw Floyd Bannister back in 75 for Arizona State had 15 and Brett Laxton for LSU had 16 against Wichita State and he's ahead 0 and 2. How do you follow those big games up Laxton didn't get a chance to because it was in the championship game Benson poured 11 strikeouts in another one Bannister had seven. 0 2 and that one is going to get into the seats here. So Bednar doing exactly what he did in the first meeting. Eric Kennedy hitting 258, four homers, 27 runs batted in in the postseason. He is hitting 296, one home run, and nine runs batted in. Steady diet of fastballs. We'll see if he rises to the top again. No, he kept it down, and he got a good piece of bat on that. And those are the ones that you're going to see, and you're going to say, oh, he got a good piece of bat on it. Pitches down in the zone. Set him up right there, 0-2. Try to most likely freeze him. Ends up getting that foul ball, but he's going to go back up to the zone. No, instead he throws him a breaking pitch and he's picked up two strikeouts. Well, oh, he's feeling it already and it's early. You usually want to get the starters, the good ones, early in the game. He's got the fastball working both up, down, and then if he has this slider working as well, and the hitters can't lay off it, let's not forget the last two strikeouts were pitches out of the zone. The fastball up to Antico and now Eric Kennedy chasing a pitch down and in. And here's Zach Zubia. Had a big three run double against Virginia then a go ahead single. Okay. And the breaking pitch just misses and he had that huge home run against this team late last night. Mississippi State was down five to two they rallied in the eighth inning to tie it at five only to give up a three run home run to Zubia in the ninth. That's down. 
Two breaking pitches both missed in and down it's two and oh. To the seats. Zuby got the offense going last night and the guy behind him was the one that put him ahead in the ninth. Zuby has home runs in each of his last two games and he'll show you too. He did it yesterday. He hit it into the, the bullpen the opposite way. He doesn't need to pull it to hit home runs. He's got great power out to that right center field gap. You know it's interesting the 2 0 and the 2 1 fastballs fouling them off to the right side. It's telling you that fastball has got some good life early on. Bednar's ready. Zubia steps in. And the state fans are on their feet here in the first. And that's on the ground to the shortstop, Forsyth. That's a quick one there. Good job by Bednar. Strikes at two of the first three. It's going to be Tristan Stevens on the mound for Texas as we see Rowdy Jordan and Tanner Allen at the plate. Really strong start for Will Bednar out of the gate. And you take a look at Chris Lamonis, third season, 111 and 38, Mississippi State. And doing everything he can to get this team back to the College World Series finals, including putting out this lineup of Rowdy Jordan, Tanner Allen, Cameron James. Our batting order brought to you by Capital One. And then it's Hancock, Logan Tanner, the veteran Scotty DeBrule. Brad Cumbus had a big hit last night, helped them get back into the game. Kellum Clark's got big time power in the shortstop lane, Forsyth. Now on the mound, Unlike Bednar is Tristan Stevens. His other start here against Tennessee didn't go so well. No, it didn't, but his season has gone outstanding. I, I think a lot of the discussion is about Ty Madden, and rightfully so. He's he's the best pro prospect that Texas has in the rotation, but Stevens had a big time year now. Maybe not quite as much swing and miss as, as you see from Bednar, but today it's just turned a page, man. You're on three days rest. You get back on the bump and see what goes on. Strike one of the slider are key. When he can get ahead of guys and get soft contact early, he's got to land that slider, though. The slider's a big part of Stevens. And there is Ty Madden for Stevens. He only threw 58 pitches in that start. It'll be Rowdy Jordan having a great postseason, 381 average. First pitch called strike one from Billy Van Raphorst. Two things are going to have to happen for Texas to hang in this game. One soft contact early on in, in this game, the defense has to play well. Can't give away outs against this Mississippi State lineup. One ball and one strike. Jordan, 381 in the postseason with 16 hits. Six of them have been doubles. He's got one homer, 27 total bases. Allen on desk getting 353 in the postseason. And this one's going to find the seats. The skies are getting lighter and lighter. We may get a little glimpse of the sun here later tonight, huh? KP meteorologist what do we got this feels like the third week of September it does right. yeah. this is just I like perfect. It. humidity's down winds hardly blowing about 70 degrees no what do you got no swing. Jordan and Allen three years Mississippi State three trips to the College World Series. Chris talked about their relationship. And that's popped out of play. They'll get into debates too. And the argument about sort of the dirty and the messy, they kind of settled up by saying one's messy, the other's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense to them. <laughs> Going to go foul. And a couple of kids running around our hotel. We share the same hotel as Mississippi State. They must have been six and eight. Hopped on the elevator with me, and they're like, Do you know what floor Mississippi State's on? I said, I, I, I don't know. They got off with me at eight, and then they started whispering to each other, I, I heard Tanner Allen's down in the, down in the lobby. They <laughs> hop right back on to run down to find him. Okay. And he has reached cult hero status in Starkville. And 
And Roddy Jordan's worked him way into a 3 2 count. Slow one right back to Stevens. And look out, a little high throw. And none of that looked real smooth, but he gets the out. So in the last game of Super Regional in Starkville, Tanner and Rowdy, this is them walking off Duty Noble for the final time in front of all their fans. Chris Lamone has told me he began the year he didn't know if they, these guys were going to come back. They could have had an opportunity to maybe go play for an MLB team and, and get drafted and signed, but so glad that they were able to come back. They said, we've been here before. Mississippi State doesn't make it easy for them or their fans, so they're ready for this one. So Jordan now will take a seat. He'll watch Allen, the right fielder, monster season, 380, 11 homers, 65 oh runs batted in. That one's just up. Ball one. Just like that, three quick pitches and three balls. <laughs> Against the Cavaliers earlier this week, Virginia was throwing a no hitter until the eighth inning. A Kellum Clark homer, and then this guy, a three run shot. And he sends one up the middle, and that's going to get through. Tanner Allen. Not hard hit at all, but the defense is playing straight up on that one. Allen getting it through. Again, this is what Tristan Stevens trying to do. You see the defense right there, Faltini playing regular shortstop. No chance for him and no chance at all for Mitchell Daly. Easy knock. Now you have the veteran Tanner Allen at first base, with Cameron James up to the plate. Ten stolen bases for Allen, and James sends this one towards the line in right, getting down quick and just foul. Douglas Hodo is over there patrolling right field. We got a souvenir right there. A Longhorn fan. James, tough guy to double up. A lot of speed. He's got 11 homers and 59 runs batted in 12 doubles. It's a team that's got 114 doubles. Numbers offensively between the two teams are eerily similar. They each came in hitting 277. State had one more run all year than Texas did 448 to 447. State had five more hits 10 fewer doubles five more homers and there are mirror images of each other offensively in a lot of ways. Yes he did and that's a strikeout for Tristan Stevens. I got to that slider count right there. You know, it's the first time he's faced a right handed hitter five of the nine in the lineup for Mississippi State are going to come from the light left side when they face the right hander Stevens that time though got ahead of camera James finished him with that slider down the way. One of the reasons you may see some reluctance on guys like Allen or James if he were to get on to run the guy behind the plate for Texas is terrific. Yes he is. Just a freshman Silas Arduan can really throw it. Throw to uh, Stevens so far 1-5, one 1-5-5 five, one five, five to the plate. It's not showing a slide step at all. Tanner Allen, you said earlier, Ravi, he's, he, he can steal a base. Not going, and the next one to Hancock. That's just in to even it up one ball and one strike. Again, just underway, Mississippi State and Texas. College World Series, the winner of this game will take on Vanderbilt in the World Series finals, which begin on Monday. 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN 2. Hey, did you hear me? <laughs> 
That one to the second baseman staying down on it nicely as Mitchell Daly and Tristan Stevens gives up just one hit to Allen and that's it. Second inning coming from Omaha and TD Ameritrade. Augie Garrido, Ron Polk for Mississippi State, two of the legendary coaches in the college Inside. game as the first one is into Melendez, ball one. At one point during the season, he was on fire, having seven homers in six consecutive games. And perhaps that big bat is back. He was a big two-way player at Coronado High School, and he also played football his senior year. He had labrum surgery, so that ended the pitching days. And then he went to be a corner infielder and the designated hitter. And he's got a 3-0 pitch, and that's a walk. So a little different for Bednar to start off the second. I guess. Strikeout, strikeout, ground ball out to start. Now he goes four straight to Ivan Melendez, Texas, as their first man on here in the second. Next up for the Longhorns, Mitchell Daly. 319 average. A couple of homers. Texas will lay a bunt down. They'll move a runner up. They'll steal bases very aggressively. And here comes that bunt. And it's going to be Bednar who will go to first. And there is your sacrifice to get Melendez into scoring position. Well, that's what they do real well. Just play the small game, put the pressure on the defense, and try to get a run early put him in scoring position you don't get a lot of opportunities against Bednar there's the head man David Pierce in year number five after stops at Sam Houston and Tulane and first chance for an RBI with a runner in scoring position it's Cam Williams leads the team in doubles with 20. Breaking pitch slices right across the plate for strike one. First game he faced him, everything was up. Breaking ball was up. The fastball was belt high, could not catch up to it. Two of this ball is pounded to right field. Allen going back. Now he turns and it is gone. Cam Williams, his 12th. And a very different story for the Longhorns against Bednar. They lead it two to nothing. KP, we talked earlier about making adjustments. Said it earlier. Last time they got him out, it was up. Cam Williams right here making an adjustment. Count in favor of Bednar. He catches up to it. He's looking up in the zone and he let it ride in the air. And if the wind slightly blowing that way, it just looked right more and more as Allen was going to right field. He just let it ride up there and he got it up. The sacrifice moves Melendez to second. Williams cleans him up with a majestic blast to right. And here's Douglas Hodo. Well, if your goal was to get to Bednar early, mission accomplished. Yeah, I guess. I mean, let off walk right here, and then Cam Williams does what nobody's really been able to do against Bednar in this tournament, and that is center up a high fastball. Sweeping pitch in there. Bednar, of hey, course, his older brother, David, who's a major league pitcher. 
They've been competing with each other for years and likely will be doing it at the next level at some point. Hodo's dad was on that 1983 Longhorn Championship team. Will not offer it that. This one is towards the line and right's gonna be foul. We are now too shy of the all-time record for home runs at TD Ameritrade. That was the 21st of this College World Series. Moved here in 2011 from Rosenblatt. It's the age-old question in a series. So the next time you see the pitcher, who has the advantage, the pitcher or the team that had seen him already? Three. Good pitch on the corner. Strikeout number three for Bednar as Hodo walks back, chewing gum. Fastball right here to get Hodo for the third strikeout of the game. Back to the to that Williams home run too. Bednar threw that pitch exactly where he wanted to throw. It was elevated. It was up. Williams just got to it. Yep. And that's what they weren't able to do in the first time. But it, it, you just felt like Texas and how good this offense is. Made a fast. That there was an embarrassment to that. Yeah. I think to to the offense of the Longhorns. You have to. I mean, they were missing fastballs right there up in the zone at the letters, and they just could not explain why they were missing it. They did not make the, the adjustments within game. So far, so good with that one swing of the bat. Trey Faltini. Boy, that slider is looking good. He's ahead of him 0-2. He's got three strikeouts already. That home run he allowed to Williams was the 12th that Bednar has given up this year. He's gone. Bednar, after giving up the bomb, strikes out a couple. 0 2 pitch for the son of Reggie. His name is Cam. Don't go up there the second time because if you do, he'll make you pay. Puts the Longhorns up 2 0 in the top of the second. We'll be headed to the bottom half now with State coming up. This week's Sunday Night Baseball game, it's the Cubs and the Dodgers. Two two-run home runs, bottom eight, helped L.A. get past them last night, 6-2. It snapped what was a four-game skid. They've got two more in the series. You can catch the finale Sunday, 7 Eastern time on ESPN and the app. Back here, that one is laced up the middle, and just like that, State will start at the bottom of the second with a Logan Tanner single. Jumping on the first pitch from Stevens. That's what State has done all tournament long. They get hit, they hit right back. This is not a team that is prone to <laughs> sacrifice at all. And strike on the outside corner at 89 miles an hour. You know, though, Scotty DeBru will will use that backside ground ball a lot. He'll, he'll you'll see him hit ground balls the opposite way, and that's why him squaring right there and getting Cam Williams to come in a few steps. He's not going to bunt. I don't think he's going to bunt, but it does give him a little bit better hole on that left side. So just for comparison, Mississippi State has 13 sacrifice hits. Texas has 49. You manage according to the roster you have, and that's why you see the differences also. I know the philosophy is one, but you end up getting the players that you want according to the way you want to manage the game. The Jacksonville transfer grounds one to Daly to Faltini, and that's an easy 4 6 3 double play. Set at the beginning. Defense is going to have to play big. It's a contact pitcher on the mound right there. Easy bounce. Great feed over to Faltini. Easy throw over to Zuby at first.
And that brings up Brad Cumbest. Number eight here. Sky high. Two middle infielders go out. They give way now that the sun pops out to Antico. He catches it. You can see the shadows now. Beautiful night here in Omaha and a 2 0 Horns lead. Welcome back, everyone, to Omaha, Nebraska, the key to the city now waiting to be handed to one of these two teams. For more coverage of this World Series, interactive brackets, feature stories, go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Go get it, big fella. Bednar back on the bump. We go to the third inning. Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Carl Ravitch, Chris Budden down on the field. Silas Arduan is the nine hitter. He's the freshman, and what a catcher he is for the Longhorns. Now, these were the same conditions that Bednar threw the first time against Texas. The shadows were a factor. He was up in the zone. Not a lot of squaring up, a lot of swinging and missing against him. Let's see how he regroups here, top half of the third. First inning, you got four swings and misses, and as you mentioned, a lot of them the other day. He had 19 right. Sunday, but only two of them came in the first inning. Hard one behind one and two. Four strikeouts for 24 in white. Outside. All those boos coming from the back row, right? Ball was way outside. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's where he wanted to throw it just off. Didn't get Arduan to go after it this time. Comes back, challenges fastball, and Allen is under it. Didn't quite a swing and miss on that very pitch, but the slider looks really good today for Bedman. Ball carrying a little bit to right, though. We saw the big Williams homer. That thing got out there pretty good. And here comes Mike Antico as you look at the flags out there in center field. Blowing directly out. Antico offered it a few high fastballs his first plate appearance similar to that spot he struck out. They kind of call that a fair ball and it's picked up by Luke Hancock just in front of the bag and Ramon Armendariz had a good look at it. Whoa. Hit on the line. It did hit on the line right in front. Caught that foul. It appeared that he might have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the bounce before did hit on the line. <laughs> Strike one to Eric Kennedy. Without question, he was in foul territory with the ball in the glove. Ball. Chris told a good story the other day, KB, about Mike Antico's mom. Very vocal. And she was asked, you want to come in and speak to the offense, get him fired up? And Mike sheepishly Recognize the fact that his mother is now in the room with the entire team trying to give them some pointers on offense. <laughs> you know, mom runs a big cheerleading organization in Jersey. They brought all the pom poms. <laughs> there was only two the other day. They've multiplied now. <laughs> Good pitch called strike three. Kennedy gone. Bednar a one, two, three inning. He's got five punchies. State looking for some base runners and some runs as we head to the bottom of the third. Take a look at it. The back bench producing out of his mind tonight. Scotty Gustafson has drawn up this one. They won the first two College World Series games in the history of Mississippi State and then lost the next two in 85. Finals in 13 only to lose. Lost the next two in 18. And Chris Limonis hoping he has the right formula get some runs here against Stevens and get themselves into that final be an all SEC showdown as Vanderbilt sitting there waiting right now. Jack Leiter will be the likely starter in game one and be well rested. 
A lot of beach balls. Oh, there's another one. Thank you. He's not too happy right now. Mm -mm. Uh, he's going to get some more now. Your, your proper beach ball protocol is in between innings. Once we get to this point, put them away for a little bit and go in between innings, fire it back up. May have to send KP out there to give a little tutorial. One of the first years that I was here at KP said how much you want to bet there's going to be some beach balls. I'm going to bet there's like 30 on the field. Like, What are you talking about. No no I'm I just got a feeling I think there's going to be a lot of beach balls and I hadn't been exposed to the beach ball thing and there were probably you know 30 beach balls on the field. That was, that was the first time I think. That I ever saw a press of the button and. Delivered right away. Here we go. Right there on the phone. Boom on call. Here's Callum Clark four home runs. That's a bit deceitful because this guy can pound the ball. He put on a show today in batting practice. <laughs> I was in awe and that's why you've seen two change ups back to back. Definitely hit a fastball. Folks at home watching on your television your computer the app you'll see the Mississippi State batters after they get two strikes hit their chest. They practice the two strike approach a ton every day making contact this one to the line and left going over and it's off the glove of the left fielder Kennedy. A good effort but it's going to be a leadoff double for Kellum Clark going the other way. This is the time of day for the next few hours for the next hour that the left fielder is going to have a lot of trouble. Eric Kennedy right here did not pick it up well the first couple steps on contact he just did not go all out then he figured out where it was and then it was too late hits off the end of the, the glove and now runner at second no outs. And now the nine hole hitter is Lane Forsyth. He's the shortstop. He has the second most sacrifice hits on the team with three. He does square and that's strike one. Well, Zubia is in. He is aggressive right now at first base. He's forcing Forsyth to bunt at the third. And he's pulling an Anthony Rizzo here, and he gets it down, and there will be no throw to third because the runner wouldn't go to third. That smart. just gave wow. up and out. That's smart. It is, and, and you don't see it very much. And, and in that case, if he goes. Zuby has got a lot of time to spin and make a throw. Credit Texas for taking a chance right here. Zuby is 40 feet away from home plate. Yeah. And in a spot like that, if you're four sides, you got to try to figure out some way to get it down the third base line. And I, I, I like the read by the freshman at second base. And I'll tell you this, because you have a pitcher on the mound on Stevens that does not get a lot of swing and miss. I don't mind. If he swings away and tries to hit it to the right side of the field, Absolutely. seeing Zubia so close. If it's a swing and miss pitcher, that's a different story. But what Stevens has been able to do today is get the Mississippi State players to hit the ball on the ground. And it's a calculated risk that you're willing to take. Rowdy Jordan with one out, and Clark at second. Outside. That just misses. What's the situation there for a hitter Eddie if you have the bunt sign bunt and you third. see the first baseman there you just change your angle and bunt it to third you force you force a third baseman to be able to make the play so you angle the bat towards the head of the bat towards the second baseman change up for Stevens watch the angle of the bat right here on Forsyth. He has to keep it right there instead. Look how he starts bringing it back back by that. By that time the angle is just not where it has to be for him to force Cam Williams to go and make the play. Zuby is right there. He's making it easy on, on, on Stevens as well. Oh. Two and one good take from Rowdy. 
You know, the, the other thing for Texas right there, if you're a good bunting team, you're usually a good team at defending the bunt. Mm -hmm. Defending, defensing, yes. Yeah, you've been hanging around with me too much. Defending the bunt. Um, and th that was it right there. You crash your first baseman to the point that Zubia did. If they happen to bunt it anywhere close to him, you got to keep the guy home. Inside. Wow. Three balls and a strike. Tanner Allen already with a single on deck. Close pitch for Stevens didn't get it and a big one because instead of two and two you're three and one. I'm not sure if Faltini saw that he right off not. the bat he didn't and then he rediscovered it but he put his palms up like I don't know where it is. We've seen a lot of that this season this year here in TD Ameritrade ballpark hitters right off the bat they look up and they just do not see it. I tell you we've seen a lot of tonight from Stevens on the mound is the change. -up. Yep. You got five and nine from the left handed side in this Mississippi State lineup and he's utilized the change up to the left handers the slider to the right handers. The change up has been outstanding so far. And now he has two down. And he gets Allen. State's best hitter. Outfield has to play deep out of respect for Tanner's power. <laughs> Ball tied up and. Stevens on the first at bat against Tanner Allen he was starting him up. So Tanner Allen worked him down and was able to get the base hit up the middle. Back up the middle and through, and that's going to bring in Kellum Clark from second easily with Antico respecting that power. States on the board. Allen's two for two. It's two to one. Slider stays up. See the angle right there of Tanner Allen's bat. It just flattens out quickly, stays in the zone long. Hit it right back where it came from. He knows it immediately, knows he drives in a run and shaves the lead in half for Texas. Sets a state record with his 10th career hit in the College World Series. And they hope for a bunch more. Here's Cameron James. He struck out his first time up. How big did Kellum Clark's base running right there? Not going to third base. Yeah. Staying in scoring position. That's the big reason why Mississippi State's on the board right now. Who's the guy that we work with that always critiques bad base running, but lately but just can't stand it can't like stand he loses it. sleep over it hey. who is that it's the guy that writes books about sack flies Tom Tom, Tom. Kirchner how <laughs> 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 you're good with names right. <laughs> never forget all what's his name <laughs> oh Timmy Somebody's going to draft Tanner Allen. They're going to be pretty pleased with what they got. Yes, the they are. Real solid baseball player. As James sends this one to Faltini, he gets a charity hop and he fires across the diamond for the out. But stays on the board. Diamond Dogs get one thanks to an Allen RBI. We're heading to the fourth. You're watching the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. We're back here after a year off and yet COVID obviously still impacts all that we do. We saw NC State declared a no contest after starting the College World Series 2 and 0. They fielded 13 players yesterday against Vanderbilt lost to Vanderbilt. They were assuming they would play another game 
today. Vanderbilt, in fact, yeah, assumed that after yesterday that they would be facing an NC State team that would be more full than the 13 they brought with them. Instead, after going through testing, a number of more positive tests came back, and it was decided that they would be sent packing. And right. packing has been a chore, obviously, and how you get some COVID related personnel back home and that's what the NCAA has spent a great deal of today figuring out it just stinks man I mean you, you feel for every one of those kids on that team they were the they were the one that so many were talking about coming in because of the route that they had taken had to go on the road at Louisiana Tech had to go on the road and beat an Arkansas team but nobody thought they could beat be real hard to, to think that they would come back after losing that first game in Fayetteville 21 2 here's Elliot Avent's statement heartbreaking and I'm gutted for everyone involved and for all those captivated by the heart and fight of this team our staff medical and our players have been incredible with all they've done to keep us safe get us ready day in day out I love this team and this past month many got to watch them fell in love with them as well although we're heartbroken this team will never be forgotten they will live in the hearts of Wolfpack and baseball fans forever Hurt for him, man. No doubt. It's been in 25 years, and, and, and it takes you about 30 seconds of talking to Elliot Avant to figure out that you want to talk to him for a long time. And I understand the reactions. I understand people being mad. I get it. I get it. You're mad because they didn't get a chance to compete. Um, I also understand what happened. And I think that's the hard part of this is everybody wants to go viral and yell and scream and. It just stinks. I just heard for the kids. And you know, you know what I thought was the most disappointing part of seeing in social media is the people attacking the Vanderbilt team. Yeah, stop. Come on. Let's clean that up. It, it doesn't matter who they were going to play. What happened happened, and the situation was unfortunately what it was. But I feel, again, we saw the fans right there. This town is full of Wolfpack uh, families that saved up for this moment. Mm. That program needed this. It's a program that struggles with trying to get some improved facilities, playing in the ACC. They started the year one of eight. They were a Cinderella story. They were the team that Omaha, those not associated with a college or university, had adopted as their team. You know that, that that was this year's choice NC State. And they get off to such a great start. Terrific collection of players. Now Mitchell Daly and that one is inside Bedner's missed with the last couple. That is foul. For the Vanderbilt side of it, the majority of the players didn't find out until this morning. They had an early meeting at 7 a.m., so most of them were already asleep, and that's when the coaching staff informed the team that they would be advancing. And there have been a lot of questions about Vanderbilt now moving on. This today was their testing day. Everyone has been cleared and is able to play on Monday. Yeah, Tim Corbin, the head coach for Vanderbilt, got a text message around 1.45 a.m. Woke him up, explained the situation that it was a no contest, and as a result, they would move on to the College World Series Finals. And as he said, no joy in any of that. But not a great text to get because you are a coach, and you've dealt with all of this stuff for the entire season. NC State dealt with the COVID earlier this year. That's strike three, and down goes Mitchell Daly. But the day in, day out, you talk to basketball coaches, you wouldn't believe Major League Baseball managers, there's nothing that's fun about any of this. And it reared its head here in Omaha. There's nothing fun about that slider either. That right there on the black, nothing you can do if you're Mitchell Daly. Bednar had 15 K's in his first meeting. He's got six now here in the fourth, and he'll get the home run hitter. Cam Williams launched one to right. 
So it'll stay away a little bit, and that's off ball one. Maybe the first changeup Bednar's thrown the entire game. So Williams comes up the last time, gets an elevated fastball, hits it out of the ballpark. Those are that's the only hit that Texas has so far. Second time around, first changeup that Bednar's thrown all night. Williams has a really good idea of the zone outside. Watch this 0 2 pitch. He wants it up. He executed it perfectly, just like he did the first time they met. He was able to get him not once, not twice, but three times. Williams, fourth time facing Bednar here in this College World Series, puts two on the board with one swing. Mentioned his dad, Reggie, four years of major leaguer, and here's the next one, a 2 0, and that's in there for a strike. The Odessa Florida star originally drafted in round 39 by the Mariners. Went to San Jacinto College. Hit 341 there, 37 RBIs. And that's when the big boys came calling. Three balls and a strike. Tell you what, for a guy that really loves this fastball and trusts it, just by showing that you can catch up to it and hit it, we have not seen one yet. So far in these four pitches in the second half back to Cam Williams. Got two down, a 3 1 count. Douglas Hodo is on deck. Set up outside again, and he missed a little bit, but he gets the strike. <laughs> one for the pitcher, one for the umpire, and one for you. Swinging with a slider, backdoor version, strikeout number seven for Will Bednar. A couple changeups in the at bat, fastball to get it back to 3 2, and it goes backdoor breaking ball right here. It looked like Williams dialed up for the fastball, a little bit late on the slider right there. Two more strikeouts for Bednar, but the horn still lead it by one. Saturday night, Omaha, Nebraska. This is the home of the College World Series. Texas, Mississippi State, and a good one. Luke Hancock, Logan Tanner, and Scotty DeBrule. As you look at video from high above left field, thanks to the drone. Eddie, captain tonight by who? Who do you got? I got Shea out there. I got Mike Shea. Popped up, and heading back is Hodo, and now he'll stop just short of a track, and he'll pull that in. Pop out by Luke Hancock. He's over two. Mike's out there early uh, under the tent. I'm waiting for him one day to say, hey, you, you, you want to fly this thing? He's not going to say that. Keep waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I'm waiting. Just waiting. <laughs> not going to say it. I don't think he will. No, the Terry Francona, when Trevor Bauer was into his drone stage and he had Shane Bieber on his <laughs> staff. <laughs> And Kona said he can fly that drone all he wants, but if he ever comes near Bieber, he ain't flying that drone <laughs> ever again. <laughs> Logan Tanner singled his first time up, then was involved in the 4 6 3 double play. One down. The catcher chases one in the dirt. He's gone. That's another strikeout for Tristan Stevens. Hey, the knockout round. This is where it gets real serious for the Euros. Two great matchups on Sunday, noon Eastern time. You want to watch the Netherlands against the Czech Republic, and then at 3 Eastern time, ABC has Belgium and Portugal. Both games can be seen on the ESPN app. We like to say one app, one tap, so you can watch anywhere. Woo. Woo. Who Check likes to bubble. say that? We. Who's the we here? Hop on board. One right? app, one tap. Hey. It's not as catchy as Keys to the City, but it's going to be. <laughs> Get on board now. <laughs> De Bruyne, Faltin, got him, and another one, two, three inning here for Tristan Stevens. End of four, two to one, win and move on. Heading to the fifth, two to one, Texas. Chris Lamonas joins us here, third year, Mississippi State. How unique was the circumstances around where you guys ended? You had a rain delay, you're back in the hotel, and now you get fired up for a game that means everything. 
Yeah, it, uh, the highs and lows of college baseball. So, uh, you know, big night last night, and we score in the eighth, and then you give it up in the ninth, and then you have the rain delay. It was a, uh, it was a long night. But um, I sent a text out to the team this morning, man. There's only three teams left in the country playing. Yeah. Who can't get excited to play today? And we're playing for a lot, so uh, they're playing for they're playing great. So based on what you've seen, just approach against Stevens so far. What have you liked, and what do you think needs to change? Yeah, we got to uh, you know got to push the ball up in the zone, and we got to bunt and hit and run a little bit. He's he's so good at sinking the ball and getting us to hit balls in the ground. What happens is you end up hitting into some double plays. I think that's helped him out. But uh, we've had some guys have some good abs too. We just got to keep grinding. All right, Chris. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you, guys. Four six three double play in the second. Speaking of bunting, starting things off, Douglas Hodo, and they will look down to first. No, so it's one ball, no strikes. I like what Hodo has been able to do, not only in the College World Series but in the Super Regionals. Just does all the little things right. Knows how to bunt. He can hit and run. Runs the base as well. You need players like this on your roster that can defend. Just again, 280 batting average, five home runs. Let's lock it. Two for 12, but this one is driven deep to left field. Going back and looking up is Cumbus, and it bounces off the bottom of the wall. And he will put the brakes on right there. Douglas Hodo's ninth double of the season. And what a way to start the fifth for the Texas Longhorns. I took a coaching class at Florida State. I don't know if you knew this. My coach was a big shooter, Chip Baker. My freshman year, and he told us you always hide a really good hitter in the seven hole. He can do a lot for you. Douglas Hodo, the third one here, he hung him a slider, hits it to the hits it off the wall. Now he's at second base in scoring position with no outs for Trey Faltine. Given the way Texas is operated, this feels like it may scream for a sacrifice. Faltini's got three of those this year. The short. Two fifty two hitter. Yeah, this right here is bunt all the way. It's so difficult to to be able to put a crooked number or even one run. You want to add to your lead, so Faltini can bunt. Yes, he did. Did not like the effort though. He's on the plate. He's on the plate, and that's why that one surprised him. You go fastball in at his hands right there, and it, was, it, it didn't look like a sacrifice. I mean, he was starting out of the box, but if, if you're going to get that look to where he's more bunting for a hit, keep hammering that fastball in on his hands. Look out! That is now one ball, one strike. Faltini was hit between the regionals and super regionals around six times, and he was upset. But he's on at the plate, and that's where you have to pitch him. He's got long arms. Just seems a, a hitter that is so much on it. He wants to pitch inside, but he can handle the pitch middle away as well. Ooh. Gets it on the inside. One of the reasons he may have found himself getting hit in the five NCAA regional and supers. He was eight for 19. He had 421 with three doubles, six runs, six RBIs. Hodo on second after a leadoff double and the one two and this one is to the second baseman and Drew Blue goes back and makes an easy catch. Throughout the years he's going to learn that he has to get off the plate has to well because the further that he moves because his gloves going to take him as as far as he wants to go is the bat is just going to determine how long he stays I think but. Um, the further you go along, the more the guys can execute. And if the book is out there and, and there is that hole inside, which, and when you're on the plate that much, usually there is a hole. In there. Yes, he did. And against the leap pitching like this, they're going to exploit that. Oh, yeah. Well, he got jammed on that ball that he quasi lined to De Bruyne at second base. Artuan did go on that first one. He's behind 0 and 1. Top of the fifth, 2 1 Texas. Winner moves on to the College World Series Finals. Best two out of three that starts Monday against Vanderbilt. 
Ardoin to the second baseman. And a slow one that De Bruyne throws to first. Down to third goes Hodo with two down. I'm curious how this at bat's going to go now for Mike Antico in the last game against against Mississippi State. Third at bat, he made the adjustment. Now we're going to find out against Bednar here. He's already seen him a few times. Has not been able to barrel him yet. But runner at third, he grinds at bats. So I'm not a couple of hits into left center field going the other way letting that ball travel on him. I think he was trying to there too it was a little bit late on the fastball. Outside. You see that with the first one you think you're going to continue to see it. Former St. John standout outside. looks at one outside. Got pom poms rolling here. <laughs> mom, where's <laughs> mom? This one to right center. That one's going to get into the gap, and Antico's going to go. He brings in the run. Texas now up three to one, and Antico delivers a double. That's his 16th of the year in RBI 3 1 Longhorns. It was clear the approach against Antico. It was four fastballs. They were all either on the outside part of the plate or outside and off the plate, trying to go back to the four seamer. And this one may have been a tick off the plate, but Antico, he is on it, toes up on the chalk. And man, he's, he's too good of a hitter to show him four things the exact same four time, the exact same way four straight times. The fourth one he caught up to, drills it into right center, extends the horns lead. Eric Kennedy up now. Big time two out hitter, Antico, too. And there are the pom poms and the horns up by two now. What a college World Series he's having. <laughs> Bednar will retire Kennedy, but not before a couple of doubles in the inning. David Pierce will join us. And his team is up three to one, heading to the bottom of the fifth. Texas adds one of the fifth, lead it three to one. David Pierce is the head man for the Longhorns. What was the approach going into this game against Bednar, who was so good the first time? Well, I mean, we always work right center field gap, and we just felt like we got to get on top of home plate a little bit more and try to work more left center field gap for our right handers and left handers to stay in the middle of the field. and. You know, we know he's going to get some strikeouts, but we've got to be opportunistic. So far, we've done that. Coach, what was Mike Antico's mom's speech like? <laughs> it was great. Uh, we walked in the hotel, and she was just excited. She went coach speech on him and <laughs> pumped him up. It was fun. She went coach speak? Yeah. yeah. You know, she is a coach. Yeah. Did she have her pom-poms with her? Oh, no, oh, no. no. She was serious. Strict speech. Yeah. Thanks, David. All right. What? <laughs> Hard hitting questions from Eddie as Cumbus swings at one that's high, and that's going to come back here. Football player, now baseball player, Brad Cumbus. Big double, big hit last night, scored a couple. Hit seventh, as Eddie said. That's the secret sauce now. You got to have your seventh hitter be a really good hitter. And that one is down the line in right fair. And Cumbus will lead things off with a double. Boy, State, and they answer. Ninth double of the season for number 33, Brad Cumbus. Wow, pitch away. He goes with it. We've seen, we've seen him hit a couple balls already in right field and do some damage with. Gets the fans back on their feet. And the bench is alive again. Never count out 
Mississippi State and their offense. We've seen some late inning rallies. And they have been behind in this game. Two zip, then two one, now three one, but a chance here in the fifth. Kellum Clark. Be interesting too. So for Texas, you think about their bullpen arms. Tanner Witt, 41 pitches in inning and a third last night. Aaron Nixon threw 14 pitches Thursday and then 34 more last night. He was in before the rain delay, came back after the rain delay. Lucas Gordon who has thrown five pitches in the NCAA tournament and Cole Quintanilla 34 warming up. Great change of 75. <laughs> Great arm action right there. His hips were completely open by the time that. He realized what was going on. He's seen a lot of those so far today. I think you may see another one right here. Don't leave it up though. Now two balls two strikes Clark would love to at the worst get the ball to the right side and get Cumbus down to third base. Big time gap between Antico in center and Hodo in right field. And a liner over the head of the second baseman. Cumbus did not know if Daly was going to be able to catch that ball. So he now makes it to third base. But men are on the corners with nobody out. One too many change ups. This one stays up. The other one that he spit on was down in the dirt, so it looks a little bit more elevated. You see the circle change? Just gets enough on it for Daly not to be able to get it. Watch this. Rowley looked in real time like it was in slow mo, and a good job at second base by Cumbus. I like it. You don't know if Daly's going to make the play. Go back, just go station. Don't get yourself picked at second for two. See what happens here with the nine hole hitter Forsyth. He's swinging on the ground to the Faltini. He'll go to second for one to first. They'll turn the double play. State does get a run as Cumbus comes in. But a good turn by Faltini and Daly. But it's back to a one run game. KP, you go right back to what coach had said about maybe putting the runners in motion, hit and run, do something, because every time they make contact, it's not a strikeout pitcher, it's in the ground. I thought for one. Then right there, first and third with the bottom of the lineup. Second double play that State is hit into, and here is Rowdy, and this one is to the gap in left center, and it's down. He'll take a big turn. But they have three hits in the inning now, and Rowdy Jordan is aboard for Tanner Allen. Third time around. He's hot. This time Faltini's actually more up the middle than the last couple times when there was a runner at second base. In the third and the first time up in the first. Jordan off first nine stolen bases and will throw over.
Just a huge outfield with plenty of room on each side of Antico in center field. As fast as he is, there's a lot of space between he and Kennedy in left and he and Hodo in right. Let alone the rooms that you see on each line. Outside. He's had a pretty good change up. It's time to throw it when you're behind the count. This guy's not beating me. Oof. Certain guys, Kyle, you faced when you were pitching at Stanford, even in the majors, that just looked comfortable at the plate. And you realize, yep. like, this guy is just too comfortable there. Yeah, the foul balls and the takes were always the ones that, if it was a comfortable take, that never really felt very good to where it, it seemed like they knew what was coming before it even came out of your hand. I don't know if I would go back to where he just did right there with Tanner Allen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. You got away with it once. I wouldn't take my chances of getting away with it again. Swung at one that was off. And instead of a two one count, it's one and two. That's why you tap your chest. You got two strikes on you. It's a hard guy to strike out. 33 punch outs, 22 walks on the season for Tanner Allen. Beaten up the middle. Faltini will catch it with his foot on the bag, and that is a force out. Nice job by the shortstop. They get a run. Stays now a one run game. We're heading to the sixth. 3 2. And as we head to the sixth, three runs, three hits for Texas. Inside. Two runs, seven hits for Mississippi State. Bullpen activity for the Longhorns. Nothing behind Bednar yet. Sims is available out of a pen and that was the combination that struck out 21 Longhorns the first meeting. This one is put up sky high and right and should be an easy one for Tanner Allen and it is. Well the punch outs may be down a little bit tonight but the stuff for Bednar has still been outstanding. Or arm side fastball control he punched the first two out and two more in the second seven total in the game for Bednar. But credit the Horns now because a few spots that he wanted to throw the fastball, they've done damage. The elevated fastball that Williams hit out for the two run home run, and then a fastball that was away and maybe even off the plate to Antico. Ouch. That's where they've scored the runs. Well, the it was a fastball or a foul ball right up the knob of the bat there to Melendez. Players' reaction never lie right there. You see it hits off the knob. He doesn't even grimace or anything. So far, Zuby and Melendez, they've seen the ball pretty pretty well tonight. Not a lot of damage from both of them. One ball, two strikes. Melendez has walked twice, and he scored one. We saw Landon Sims just starting to stretch out there in that state bullpen. Next game for the winner will be Monday at 7 Eastern time on ESPN 2. Game one of the College World Series finals. Dar shakes the first and he's ready to deal to Melendez. Look out, and it's inside, three and two. He tried to call time, didn't get it, and he swings and pops this up. Oh, 
Hogan Tanner. Cameron James was right there with him, but a good catch. I don't know if you saw it, but Melendez put that right hand up. He put it up fairly early, too, and he was not granted time. We've seen a lot of that. I'd have a lot of trouble with that. I used to play with contact lenses, so I was one guy that used to ask for time all the time. If they, if they had any issues, wonder if any of these players trying to just ask for time with so much, it's a little bit frustrating not to get it. That dar one out away from getting through the six. The Outside. first pitch is off the plate. Ball one. We're trying to confirm if that was up two. It was off. And Mitchell wanted to know was it up? up. up. Top pitch one and two, eighty eight on the corner. And now he's got. Mitchell Daly set up. He struck him out once. Seven punch outs. Coming off the 15 strikeout game, Will Bednar. Just down. The other night when he struck out 15 in three of the innings, he struck out the side. Texas managed just one hit and three total base runners. A little different story tonight. The hits aren't there, but the runs are. Three runs, three hits. Two, two, that's high. Full count. Ball to center about face goes Jordan. He will stop just shy of the track and make the play. One, two, three inning for Bednar. James and Hancock looking for their first hits when we come back. What's the drone run you right now? That one right there? That's um, I don't know. I've never been good at prices right. But you are good at that stuff. Any, anything that involves a screen, Eddie excels at. I'm all in. Here we go. Bottom six. Mississippi State trails by a run. Texas, by the way, they are 46 and 0 when leading after six innings. Now part of that's been having Tanner Witt and Aaron Nixon at the back end. And again, not sure either one of them is going to be available tonight. Well, given the circumstances, you wonder if both have said to Pierce, you need me, I'm good. I would think so. Um, but I, I, if we do see him, I don't think you're going to see him for any more than three outs apiece. Looks like Quintanilla continues to warm down there. Mm -hmm. Cameron James, Luke Hancock, Logan Tanner, three, four, and five. KP, we got the answer to the burning question. Okay. You can get a good drone for a under 500. Okay. High level, maybe two to three thousand. Okay. How's the insurance on it? 
because if Eddie's going to roll out there and start playing around, we probably better make sure that the insurance is paid up. And is there? A, there has to be another top level to that. Oh definitely. yeah. Oh yeah. It's buzzing around TD Ameritrade as we speak. I mean, do I have to sign some waivers or something? Huh? Again, I don't see any circumstance. You're not going to have to worry in about. which you put your hands on the controls. I know you're disappointed. I know yeah. you can usually sweet talk your way into these things. I don't see it tonight. Another good effort from Bednar, not necessarily as dominant with the strikeout numbers, but he's got his team right in this. And how about that? A start there from Cameron James. He walked himself right down to first after fouling a few off. That right there is an at bat that Chris Lamonis has to really appreciate from his cleanup hitter. Fouling off some tough pitches. He struck out in the first inning. Got a slider down and away, and then he rolled over to the shortstop the second time up, and there he just worked the walk. It's so interesting. The offensive approach is almost exactly the opposite on both of these sides. If you're Mississippi State, the thought is we got to see the ball up. We got to make sure the ball's up, and that time he lets the 3 2 fastball go down and away. If you're Texas, the whole thought is we got to see the ball down. We got to make sure that fastball's down in the zone. Two guys throwing, I mean, by name, the same pitch. They're both fastballs, but the way that they utilize them, the two seamer that Stevens throws that when he's good it has sink that it does late and he's getting a bunch of ground ball outs and then that four seamer that's elevated. Let's see if Lamonas puts some action here. James has the most stolen bases on the team with 19 of them. Arduan behind the plate is terrific. I mean he told us during the coach's interview he said hey I'm going to have to start doing hit and runs putting the defense in motion. To stay away from the double play. So far, two double plays for Texas in this game. Erdogan has caught 20 this year, and they'll throw the first again. Luke Hancock, the cleanup hitter, is a 256 hitter with 10 bombs not going, and that one's down. One ball on a strike. They choose to go to Quintanilla out of the bullpen. He's been terrific this year. 5 and 0, 25 appearances, a 123 ERA. 37 punch outs, 10 walks. He's ready when they need him. Good count right here. 1 1 to put something on. Not a big lead, and that one is on the corner. One ball, two strikes. Tough pitch from Tristan Stevens there. It's mm, a pretty good one. Pretty good one. Yeah, for you that works a pitcher. Everyone in Starkville saying, "What are you talking about, KP?" Not going one two, and that one is past the dive of the second baseman Daly. James will go to third. And he's in there safely diving head first. Luke Hancock delivers with two strikes. Men on the corners again for State. Talk about pitching, defense, and watch James right here. He's already thinking three. He sees the ball go by. He's not looking to the third base coach. He made up his mind right there. I'm going to third. He has to throw me out. Believes in the speed, has a good clock around the bases. And gets there. Now runners at first and third. No outs for State. Is Pierce going to make a move or is he going to allow Stevens to face Logan Tanner? It looks like he's going to let the starter stay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sean Allen, the pitching coach, is going to make his way out. 
usually pitching coach jogs out to the mound. They're not making a, they're not making a move. This is a discussion about approach right here, just to make sure Stevens is feeling all right. Quintanilla is ready. I put a circle and an asterisk on that Cameron James walk and how important that may end up being it was a terrific at bat the walk and the base running so far those are the little intangibles that take you a long way and that's one of the major reasons why Mississippi State is where they are right now one of three teams still in it. Big spot here in the six. We gave you that number that the Longhorns leading after six all year are 46 and 0. State trying to prevent that from being the situation with Tanner. First pitch, high hopper over the head of the third baseman. Tying run, James is in to third base, goes Hancock, breaks her on there. And how about that hop over the head of Cam Williams? Tanner, a double second hit of the night. And we are tied with two in scoring position and nobody out. Look, they got the ground ball. It's exactly yeah. what they wanted. Hits right on the dirt. Cam Williams playing two steps behind the bag, is not able to get it. Hard surface you see right here. Goes across instead of, instead of back. Now runners at second and third, no outs, and the pressure's on the Longhorns. Well, they will not be leading at the end of six. They will have a new pitcher as Tristan Stevens is out, and Quintanilla is coming in. Game to get to the College World Series Finals is currently tied at three. That'll be the day for Tristan Stevens on the mound, but man, the, the two seamer was really good in that changeup, especially the left handed hitters. Had all three of them going, and I thought the, the sinker stayed good the entire time. State just got a few swings and, and a few ground balls that found a home. Compass to double the opposite way, and then this ending a leadoff walk to Cameron James. Hancock singles. Logan Tanner with the double that hit about two feet out in front of home plate. But for Stevens, those nine hits. Is the number that jumps out not nearly as much swing and miss as Bednar, but you know, for the sinker ball guy, if they're hitting ground balls at guys, it's going to be a pretty good night. Sometimes the ground balls aren't at guys. So Cole Quintanilla is on the mound. He's been very good, stranding 13 of the 18 that he has inherited, but this is not an easy spot. Runners at second and third. Scotty DeBrule will bat for Hale State. Graduates transfer out of Jacksonville where all he did was hit. Oh, they're bringing the infield at midpoint right here. Not all the way in. I'd rather see the middle back. With no outs, I'll give him the lead. I'll give him one run. Still have three chances, nine outs to give, but to play there, you're risking that runner at second from scoring. That's a ball. Jacksonville with 19. He was first on the team in walks. He's got a good eye. He had two triples on base of 404. He had 71 hits, 10 doubles. And he was unbelievable in 2020, hitting 426 before the year was shut down. That's way high, 2 and 0. Good velocity, 94 and away. 
If it continues, it's fastball slider. Those are the two he's going to go after you with those two primarily fastball will get into the mid 90s like he saw right there. That slider he threw it the first two pitches to De Bruyne. Good one there. Sure was. Quintanilla has not allowed an inherited runner to score since April 13th. April 13th against Nevada. Nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Brad Cumbust, who's been Mr. Clutch for Mississippi State, is on deck. That's a walk, and they are loaded right now with dogs. They're feeling it inside that dugout. Outfield playing straight away against Cumbus. Cumbus already has hit the ball hard to center field and a double to right field. One grand slam this season for State. Slow roller to third will come home with it. That's the force out. Ardwan will not go to first. Heads up play by Cam Williams, who jumped on it. Come to try to hold up. Now there's some good hands over there on that left side of the infield. Williams can also play short. There's some range and good footwork. Watch him right here attack this one, square up the body, and just throw a strike over to Ardwan. How he sets it up. Goes from the angle, uses his entire body right there to make sure. Throws a strike to home. Kellum Clark next up. Fouled off. Looks like that's the book on Callum Clark because he showed him the other day that he could turn on a fastball. So far, we've seen a lot of change-ups against him. That's Quintanilla's probably third best pitch. If, if the numbers are right, that was the 12th change-up that Quintanilla has thrown the entire season. Didn't throw it very often. Oh. On the outside corner, and Quintanilla ahead 0-2. Six five two twenty out of Cedar Park Texas Cole Quintanilla delivers an 0 2 to Kellum Clark in the dirt. What do you got, Jeff? Where's the work? One and two. Williams fired that ball home so quickly. I thought Ardwan for a second was going to try to throw to first to get Cumbus. He's got such a good arm. Tanner's down there at third. To Brule at second, Cumbus at first. That's a good pitch, and he's gone looking. Quintanilla picks up the strikeout. And the bases stay loaded with two down. It looked like a pretty good slider to me, Eddie. I, I, it got them all fired up on the Mississippi State bench. I, it, Kellum Clark looks surprised. Billy Van Rapport's, I, I think it surprised him that it was strike three. Yeah, I don't think he knew it was strike three, but that looked like a strike. Lane Forsyth is not going to bat. Mississippi State's going to a pinch hitter here for Forsyth. Hancock. Catcher. Yeah. yeah. Josh, a 193 hitter. Let's go, 
little more power than Forsyth. We saw Logan bunt one right back to the first base, but he was thrown up and hit into a 6-4-3 double play. So Forsyth out. And here's Hatcher with the bases loaded. Now two down. Swings wildly at a first pitch slider in the dirt. 0 and 1. But I like what coming off the bench looking fastball. I'm okay with that. You're looking for one pitch out of the bench, be ready to hit. Ends up getting that slider. Mm. Hatcher behind 0 and 2. He's 1 for 2 as a pinch hitter this season. Okay, so Cam Williams now has taken a few steps back. He's far away from Logan Tanner, who's on third. Logan Tanner's got to take a big lead just in case there's a slider in the dirt. Not a lot of speed, but if he can get a good jump, take a bigger lead, he could have a chance. Got him swing. What a job by Cole Quintanilla out of the bullpen for the Longhorns. He will leave the bases loaded. We get the seventh, eighth, and ninth to play, and we're tied at three. Let's take a look at tonight's high performance play. It's brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Boom. Cam Williams about face. Two run shot in the second inning. That was high performance early, and since then, they've got one. State's got three. New ball game as he steps to the plate. In the seventh, Tanner Leggett is now playing shortstop for Mississippi State. Well, Bednar will continue to throw. Landon Sims is ready. And according to our own Chris Budden, looks like Tanner Witt is available. Nixon is not. So Texas's bullpen down at least one significant weapon. Quintanilla was outstanding the last half. Williams, Hodo, Faltini for Texas. Oof, that's filthy. And Bednar, this is pretty impressive back to back starts here. I guess. He's held the step tonight. The fastball hasn't had quite the velocity with, with what we saw in his first start against Texas. Um, and, and not quite as much swing and miss, but he still punched out seven today. Tanner wants it outside. That's where it is, but it's down. Williams is diving out over the plate just looking away has not been thrown in since that home run mm. <laughs> golf shot so KP we'll see lighter on Monday not sure if we see rocker again we saw back earlier this week for Stanford Sims this guy right here. Some future major leaguers on the mound here in Omaha. Ty Madden. Ty Madden, Texas. Looking forward to our draft coverage. And the home run derby coming up in Colorado for the All Star game festivities. Two and two to Williams. And good job hitting that baseball in the left field. Williams adds a single to that home run leadoff man aboard for Texas in the seventh. Well, he's been getting a high dosage of fastballs away ever since that home run and gets another one here. This time just hits it off the end of the bat, fillets it to left field. Hands stay, head stays still, hands through the zone. Now leadoff hitter on for Texas. Pretty routine. Texas gets a base runner on, and they will lay a bunt down. Yeah, this is their best bunter. 11 sacrifice. Hits for Hodo. Tough one, and that is a pop out. Nice hustle from Hancock. And a mistake for their best bunter. Again, right there, keeps the bat level, but the pitch up. 
Doesn't bring the hands up, and because of it, ball in the air, he's definitely disappointed with himself. There's the pitcher, Quintanilla. Here comes Chris Limonis. This one is Sims's game now. How about Will Bednar so far at this College World Series? If this is it for him, and it is. He's been phenomenal. He punched out 15 in his first start against Texas, works into the seventh today. Seven more strikeouts for Bednar, but he will give way to the closer right here. Here in Omaha, Bednar leaves with seven Ks, and he hands the ball off to Mr. Reliable himself. Landon Sims, he's appeared in 23 games. He's got a 160 ERA. He has 92 strikeouts and 14 walks. He's been a machine. Pretty straightforward for Sims. You're going to see primarily forcing fastballs at the top of his own and sliders. Stop me if you've heard that before. Same approach as, as Bednar. It's very similar. When he's right, when he's rested, fastball can be 95, 96 from Sims. Is Bednar will now watch the rest of this one, but if you got to turn it over to one guy, you just turn it over to the one guy you want to if you're Mississippi State. That means you're doing something right as a starter. Go from starter Absolutely. to Sims. And there was there was a point late in the game last night when it was tied. Sims went down to potentially warm up. Sprinted. And I think yes, he did. The decision if they, if Mississippi State would have taken a lead last night, Sims would have been in the ball game. They didn't. He played catch, warmed up a little, but not enough. And you could tell that was the decision for that Mississippi State coaching staff. Do we go all in right here, or do we save Sims just in case that we get to tomorrow? Now, and this is a guy that at times this season has come on and got him 12 outs. This was the guy that followed Bednar in the first game against these Longhorns where Bednar gave you 15 punch outs Sims added six they struck him out 21 times. So here we go with Trey Faltini who will stand right up on the plate. Cam Williams down there at first he's got four stolen bases he's got a pretty healthy lead not going. And a good start for Landon Sims. Had a big series in the USF Super Regional in Austin. Got some big hits. Texas trying to get the same out of him right now. Mm. Strike two. Sims is the type who if the ball would fall on the infield or a player would make a mistake would immediately tell everybody to calm down. I got this. A bulldog and a warrior 0 and 2 to Trey Faltini. No check no says the first base umpire. Man, Sims Sims hides the ball so well it's hard for hitters to pick it up. Could have gone either way almost. Gets the call. He wanted it. <laughs> Tanner set up outside. The one two. And towards the seats. Hustling over his handcuff. He will get it. Hey, baby. Beautiful. Share the sug. <laughs> that is. When Sims rolls out of the bullpen at Duty Noble, will play Still of the Night by Whitesnake. Got him. That's 89. Looked like it was 99. Faltini strikes out. There's the approach. Come in, get him to two strikes. Sims just takes that four seamer and throws the daylights out of it, trying to get up and out of the zone. Logan Tanner knows exactly where they want to go. Faltini can't hold up. First out since coming into the ball games. A strikeout for Landon Sims. Now nearing 100 on the season. Silas Artwan, the catcher. Strike one. Sims played on a travel team in Georgia with 
Vanderbilt's Kumar Rocker. Decent staff. Oh, and two. Mississippi State debut for Landon Sims 11 pitches against Wright State nine of them went for balls he walked two, gave up a run without getting an out since then he's been lights out he really is hiding it tonight. I mean, it, it's hard to pick up. Yeah, it's a shorter arm path right now for Sims. He tucks it right back behind him, and then before you know it, it's 93 94 coming right at you. You can tell just by the hitter's reactions. That one gets past Tanner and now into scoring position goes Williams. He tried an off speed. Drops to the knee. We've seen it so many times. He puts the knee on the inside instead of opening it up. And that right there just caused that yeah. ball to go through. Logan Tanner's usually really good back there blocking it. That, that wasn't one of those times. Because even if that ball comes all the way up, it's hardly even going to hit his chest protector. I think that knee just stuck in the ground. That's one of the harder things for guys that put one knee down is to get lateral if you have to go block. Chance for Ardwan. Just make contact and somehow get it through the infield. You'll get a run home. Right at the knees, and that's strike three. Yes, it is. Sims comes in and gets two. There's Bednar right there to give him a high five and a hug. Winner to the College World Series Finals. And the top of the order here in the bottom of the seventh. Ball number one for Cole Quintanilla. If there's a knock on Quintanilla, what would it be, KP? Uh, it's just how long is he going to hold the stuff stuff was outstanding. He he did exactly what Texas was hoping he would do when he came out of that bullpen. Here's where I think these two bullpens are a little bit different tonight. What a start here. Roddy Jordan just drops one into center field. Sims has shown the ability to go three or four innings during the course of this year. That's what they're going to need Quintanilla to do. This is how he got out of it. Bases loaded. Get the ground ball in the infield. Great play by Cam Williams right there. And then. Quintanilla just took over from there. Locks up the freshman Kellum Clark with a slider, then comes and gets the pinch hitter on three straight sliders. David Pierce fired up, and rightfully so. You got Quintanilla coming in with the bases loaded, a tight ball game. He got him out of it. Now they need him to give him probably another six outs and hold this four down because it is advantage Mississippi State in the bullpen from here on out. With Sims on the mound. Now Tanner Allen. Will not get that call too far away. One ball, no strikes. Jordan nine steals at first. These are the two that have been in the middle of everything for Mississippi State all year long. Rowdy Jordan, Tanner Allen. Allen's got two hits. He's got an RBI. That's way outside. Two and oh. Big opportunity here for State. Given the order, given Sims on the mound. Good breaking pitch, two balls and a strike. I come back with it. Both fastballs have stayed arm side. Tanner Allen hitting 383 this season. Ooh, right off the mask of the home plate umpire. Come on, 
Chelsea side. Chipper Jones tweeted at him after his big hit the other night against Virginia and he gets into that Chipper Jones crouch fouls one off Wendy and Greg are of the large family contingents of all the remaining teams, of which there are three. Vanderbilt in the finals, and one of these two. Ardwan behind the plate is such a weapon. 27 of 47. He has thrown out 20 would be base dealers. I haven't attempted one tonight. Two strikes. Running here. Three two count to Allen up. Actually, do. Thinking the same thing. You got the veteran guy at the plate. Two leaders are up. One on the bases, the other one at the plate. And out. Quintana has only walked 10 this season against 37 strikeouts here it comes on the ground double play ball Daly Faltini wow they got Tanner Allen to hit into a 4 6 3 double play and just what Cole can what a way to race that lead off single letting yeah hit it hard yeah he did this is one of the reasons why I think we both were thinking send them Stay away from the double play. Get the runner at second. You have to trust in your veteran Allen, who has so far made hard contact. And right now, if you're if if you're Chris Lamonis, you're thinking, man, I should have sent him. He told us earlier, have to be more aggressive on the bases. I have to send the runners. Did not again. Up in the zone, but call strike one to Cameron James. for that guy right there Allen How about three double plays turned by Texas defense tonight 57 on the year Cameron James 11 homers 59 RBI swings at one down one ball two strikes Everything you want in a game to get your team into the College World Series finals. Double play and then a punch out. How about facing the minimum since he came out? Bases loaded, nobody out. Quintanilla gets out of a jam in the sixth. Faces the minimum in the seventh. We are tied, headed to the eighth. College World Series 2021. Three teams are left, two of them on the field right here. Texas and Mississippi State. Longhorns 50 and 16 this year. State 47 and 17. The winner will get Vanderbilt in the finals. And we start at the top of the eighth in a 3-3 game. First pitch from Sims, strike number one. Top of the order up for Texas. Mike Antico has been really good, especially with two strikes. Doubled his last time up. Oh. 
This one is popped up right field. Allen ranging to his right, now heading back on the track. That one kept carrying, but he was there a few feet shy of the track. He just drifted with the baseball, something to keep an eye on here late. Wind isn't howling out there, but it certainly carried that one. Yeah, it's not knocking it down, that's for sure. Because off the bat, that one looked routine, and <clears throat> Tanner Allen was a step or two in front of the right field wall when he caught it. Now here's Kennedy. He's 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. And that's foul. I heard a please. Ooh, wow. please. I agree with you, Eddie. Oh, there's another please. Not another one. We got somebody in mind? Yes, we do. Oh, baby. Kennedy sends another one that we don't require anybody other than the fan themselves to have it. So it's a 3 3 game. Texas has only four hits, State has 10. Landon Sims came on last inning. He's got two strikeouts and a pop out. That's strikeout number three. Guys, watch where Logan. Again, watch where Logan Tanner is on this one. He wants it up. No, right down the middle. Freeze it. Kennedy lost at the plate today. Has not looked good at all. Three strikeouts and a ground ball back to the pitcher. Pitched him uncomfortable so far. You see those numbers. That he's had in the College World Series four for 17. Be careful here. Zach Zubia twice has flown out to right. We've seen the ball carry that way. And there's a slider to start about with strike number one. Gets the call, and right now he is getting it and throwing it, and he's throwing strikes. Shakes a few, and he's ready to get his offense back on the field, but not yet. Over through that. Zubia, you have to stay on the number one. Make the adjustment on the slider. Can't let that fastball get by you. It was 95, and you could tell a little extra from Sims on the mound. That guy right there has either recorded the win or save in four of state seven. Tournament wins this season. 2 2 to Zubia. That's in there. That's another strikeout. And Landon Sims has got four of those since he came on in the seventh. Bottom of the eighth, four, five, and six coming up for the Dogs. Back with Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Chris Budden, Vanderbilt back again, and they have been carried by those two. Kamal Rocker and Jack Leiter. Leiter in line to start game one of the College World Series finals. They've been outstanding. Vanderbilt has won, but they haven't looked good doing so. They benefited from a wild pitch and a couple of walk-off wins. They beat NC State 3-1 Friday, which would have forced a game today. But after NC State had the COVID issues and some positive tests come back, it was declared a no contest. Vandy handed the keys to the College World Series Finals. Who will they face? Who blinks first? Quintanilla or Landon Sims? Bottom eight. Luke Hancock, ahead 1 0. Mm, right down the middle at 92, 1 and 1. Hasn't been easy for Texas the last three innings. Mississippi State's had their leadoff hitter on. They got one in the fifth, they got one in the sixth. Right back at him, and it's a slow roller. Faltini will get it and fire in time. Faltini's made 10 errors this season, but he has looked real solid tonight. Let's go. 
That is Troy Tulowitzki. A terrific Major League Baseball veteran. Step in a dive is what he was telling Cam Williams. Step in a dive from the line. Make sure no doubles. Logan Tanner. Popped up and an easy one. Zubia. Boy, Quintanilla too quickly. He is on cruise control right now. I mean, he gave up the single to Rowdy Jordan to start the seventh and erased in the double play to Tanner Allen. But besides that, Cole Quintanilla, well, including that, Cole Quintanilla has faced the minimum since he has come in. Fastball's been 93 94. Double barrel action at Texas bullpen, but Quintanilla so far has been efficient and he's been. Everything that this Texas coaching staff would have asked. You know what it feels like? It feels like Quintanilla and Sims are in charge of the pace. When they're on the mound, they're in yep. charge. They're dictating everything. Hey. Strike number one to Scotty DeBrule. Popped up, and that'll get to the seats here at TD Ameritrade. There's a ton of foul territory, each first and third baseline. Quintanilla living ahead again, 0 and 2. Rule is a 280 hitter. He does not have a home run this year. That's high, two and two. The two sports star, Brad Cumbus, tight end on the football team, left fielder on the baseball team, on deck. He has power. Spoils one at 94. Winner of this game will be in the College World Series Finals and play for a national championship on Monday night against Vanderbilt. Another spoil. Keeps his role going. Sims back to the bump. Four, five, and six coming up. We're tied to the ninth. Trying to hook him here in Omaha. And this is power on power as we get set for the top of the ninth with Landon Sims having struck out four. He'll get Melendez, who had a big homer last night. On the inside corner, strike one. Yeah, that's where he has to pitch him there, in or up. Tries to. Throw a fastball down low. Melendez can catch up to it. In the dirt. Bounced up once. Hit Billy Van Raphorst and he's padded. Melendez knew off the bat last night with that go ahead free run shot in the ninth that it was gone. I'm not sure the bench did, but he certainly did as he was celebrating halfway down the first baseline. Time to elevate. Time to elevate because <clears throat> velocity wise he was on that slider. Melendez didn't miss that one by much. Landon Sims came on in the seventh inning. Strikeout, strikeout. Pop out, strikeout, strikeout. He has struck out four of the five. He's retired. And he's looking to make it five of six. No, not yet. Three and two. Hey, well, he's had some really good at bats so far. Two walks and a pop up to the catcher. Ooh. 
challenged him <laughs> with heat. You're going to do that. You better you better throw that ball belt high. That's. I was really close to the same pitch he hit last night. I know. Out. Inside that one hit him, and that probably hurt on that elbow. Ivan Melendez wears it. The athletic trainer. Yeah. Will head out just to check on that. That hurt, and that was hard. You have a pad there, but it really does not matter. Look how thin it is. Mm. That's a lot better if there's yeah. nothing there. I'd say oh, that's no. a lot better than if there's nothing there, because that was 94 boring in on it. You know what, yeah, though? You right see a lot of. All right, a little pinch, a little pinch running here. That's a big bat out of that lineup, though, for Texas. If we head to extra innings, Melendez. For Landon Sims, that was the first hit batter of the season. Now Mitchell Daly squares to butt. That's called strike one. Can't let that barrel drop. Try to get that bun down, even if you see a breaking ball. That barrel starts dropping below your hands. It's not going to end well. Dylan Campbell is the pinch runner for Melendez. First Campbell goes up to second base. Good job by Mitchell Daly and the Longhorns here in the ninth have a runner in scoring position. Tell you what, traditionally you want him to bump the ball to first base, but he gets it down. That's the important part. Did everything else fundamentally sound? Exactly what Coach Pierce wants. Runner in scoring position. You have speed at second. And Thunder at the plate and Cam Williams. Got to pitch 55 carefully. He blasted a home run to right field in the second inning. And he can turn on the fastball, Eddie. Yeah, he can turn on it, but we saw what he did last time up also. He'll get that base hit, hit it to left field. He knows they've been pitching him in. Looks like he's relaxed at the plate. This could be a conversation of just don't let him beat you. He's the left handed bat. You have Hodo the third, and you have Faltini up after him. Maybe it's how to approach him and just give him the base. Yeah, I think it's it's how to approach him, and it's also just an understanding of, of who's coming next and exactly where we are in this lineup. Don't give in. Some folks remember Cam Williams' dad, Reggie, played for the Los Angeles Dodgers in 85, 86, 87. It was with Cleveland in 88. His son now playing a starring role at the College World Series. They're set up outside. Watch where Logan Tanner sets up. Because even on the first pitch of that at bat to Williams, I think it was telling of what they're going to try to do him the rest of the time. He was four to six inches off of the plate and he moves all the way out there again. Outside. That's way outside. That's a big number in a game like this. Dylan Campbell, the pinch runner, off second, got a good lead. That's Cheese right by him. One ball, two strikes. He's chasing. The Couple inches away, and if you're Sims, you keep going away. Oh, they're going to stay there, and that's the only thing he's going to see. He's going to see fastballs in that spot. And First three of this at bat, and I think that was the approach from Scott Foxhall went out there. Is we're going to go fastballs four to six inches off the plate. If he swings that up, great, but that's where we're going to stay. 
Tumbist is deep and left. He's got two assists. Jordan's got two assists. Allen five in right field as far as arms go, and that one misses. And if you notice, Cam is actually diving out over the plate. You throw him a fastball hard in, he's, he's beat. He, yeah, he's beat. He is committed away. But the game plan is stay outside, and let's face it, Billy Van Rathhorst behind the plate, he's been giving you three inches away. Three balls and two strikes. Like I said, the Dodgers and the Indians, it's the Dodgers and the Angels his dad played for. They were once the California Angels in 92, then they were the Anaheim Angels. Suns blasted off to right, and he's got 12 homers on the season. It's a big pitch in this one, three and two. And he lifts this one to left. Cumbus goes back short of the track. Campbell coming hard to third. He will make it in there safely. So he's a wild pitcher, pass ball away from scoring, but there are two down here in the top of the ninth. That's what he was doing. He was focused to, to hit the ball the other way. Gets him in 90 feet away. Puts a lot of pressure now on covering with the slider. They appeal the second just to see if he left early. He didn't. Got to be careful here, too, with Douglas Hodo, who handles the bat really well. Third baseman Cameron James is even with the bag. There are two outs, but Texas has been known to try to create first pitch. That's foul. Go ahead run is 90 feet away. Hodo is one for three with a double. And this one has popped up. Right field, Allen going back. He's on the track and he makes the running catch. There is carry to right, but not far enough. Bottom of the ninth, Sims imploring his offense to get one. You are watching the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Chris Button. I'm Carl Ravich, and here comes Brad Cumbest. He will lead things off from the bottom of the ninth, and the crowd is ready. Sims has done his job. State has four walk-off wins this season. Tanner Allen's got two walk-off homers. Logan Tanner has one. Luke Hancock has one. Strike one to start to Cumbest. For some reason, that looks right. Sunglasses upside down? Yeah. <laughs> that looks right, too. 318 with five homers. Mm, a little late yeah. there at 92. How about what Quintanilla and Sims have done tonight for their bullpens and their teams? You, you felt like the strength of these two teams and two teams that could come back through a loser's bracket, I think probably built better than anybody to do it, are the two that we see on the field because of the depth in the bullpen. But tonight, because of what Texas had to go through in the bullpen last night, it was really going to fall on the shoulders of Quintanilla. And he's been perfect since coming into the game and has given Texas a chance to win this ballgame. Well, two. Did he go? Yes, he did. Pick one right here, and whoever you pick, you can't go wrong. So battle of the bullpens, Landon Sims, who been one of the best closers in the country the entire season. Sims come on. He's now gone three innings, punched out four. Quintanilla came in with some traffic now. Bases loaded, nobody out. Goes ground ball, punch out, punch out to get out of it. He's now faced the minimum since coming in. Kellum Clark swings the first one at another changeup. A couple of hits and a strikeout. And a batting practice show with balls flying over the bullpen. Mm. 
Oh yeah. See how many nails are still attached. Five punch outs for Quintanilla. The one and two. No, oh, that got yeah. him on the foot. That's a mistake. Ahead one and two, and he hits Kellum Clark. Winning run to first base. Slider just gets around and hits that back foot. That's fortunate right there for Mississippi State and Kellum Clark. Worked into a two strike count. You need base runners any way you can get them. It looks like they will run for Clark right here with one out. Yep. Tanner Leggett is going to come to the plate. This kid can run now. Braden Skinner. We've seen him already play defense in left field. Now we're going to see him come in to pinch run for Cullen Clark. Leggett, a 225 hitter. One homer. Nine RBIs. And they will check uh, Skinner at first. Six stolen base attempts, five successful for Skinner. Going slider, strike one. Good pitch. Runner goes. Ardwan's throw is high, and he is still in second base. Braylon Skinner putting pressure on Texas. Well, shades of Dave Roberts with the Red Sox in the day. Come on in, pinch run, you know he's going to go. And this kid is fast. He didn't get the best jump <laughs> no, I'm ever tell you. and slid early. <laughs> yes, if that throw's not high, he's yeah, out. He did get up. a great jump and, and kind of stuck when he slid, but right now it doesn't matter. It's a stolen base, and Braylon Skinner standing in scoring position with one out for State. Field has come in and the 1 1 to Tanner Leggett. That ball is into left field. Here comes Skinner. He's going to score. And Mississippi State walks it off and walks into the College World Series finals. Third walk-off win in Mississippi State's World Series history. Luke Alexander in 18, Marshall Gilbert in 19, Tanner Leggett in 21. And this is why I love this sport so much. Leggett doesn't even start, comes in for defense, gets the game-winning hit. Can't make this up, fellas. You cannot make this up. No, and it, it can't. <laughs> It can't go over state of the job that Quintanilla did on the mound for Texas. I mean, he came in, got him out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam, pitched all the way in, and then Tanner Leggett, who is thought of for defense first from Mississippi State, takes a slider, drives it out to, le to left center. The pinch hitter, Braylon Skinner, scores, and we got an all SEC final, gentlemen. Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, winner wins a national title. There was a little Dave Roberts there, though, with that stolen base, and as great as Quintanilla was, how about the job? Landon Sims did on the mound. We take a look at our Capital One player of the game. Give it up for Tanner Leggett. Came in as a defensive replacement, a walk-off RBI single. Chris. I'm here with Coach Limonis. Coach, what's the feeling right now? 
ecstatic. Just happy for our guys. Tanner Leggett barely plays. Raylan Skinner barely plays. And they get the big hits or the big stolen base. The guys that do play a lot, the Rowdies, the Tanners, to make it here now to make it to the finals. What does that mean for those guys? Well, just another stepping stone for our program, you know, to get those guys here. And shoot, they got us here, you know, the way they play. And we still got work to do. We're excited and uh, looking forward to next week. You might dub this Duty Noble North up here. What about the fan base that's come out here for you guys? So we call it in our ballpark the Dude Effect. And uh, we brought the Dude Effect to Omaha. Our fans have been great, and I know we got more coming. So uh, look out, Omaha. As you look forward facing Vanderbilt, what can you tell me about facing another SEC team you know so well? Man, we know them. I mean, we played them so much. We faced the Kumars, the Lighters. Tim Corbin has an unbelievable program, but I think it says a lot for our league to have the two of us here at the end. And uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a hell of a series. Your dad, who went to Mississippi State, couldn't be here. He's back home in Starkville, probably so proud of you. What would you want to say to him? Dad, I love you. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that one. So thanks a lot. Hail State. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. You can see the emotion there for Chris Limonis in his third year. All you've done is see Omaha, and now you're going to see a College World Series final against an SEC rival, Vanderbilt. Great point he brought up. We haven't focused too much on Sims in the postgame because of what Skinner did by stealing the base and then Leggett did by knocking in that RBI. But that dude right there, man, 23, was outstanding tonight. That shutdown. It, on both sides it was. I mean, Quintanilla, he, they go bases loaded, nobody out. He gets him out of it. And Landon Sims, he's, he's just, aside from Kevin Copps, Landon Sims has been as good as any close in the entire country. And he's been so good because he's not just a three out guy when you need him. They didn't use him as much as some others during the regular season. So he can go do what he did tonight. Got him nine outs and pitches on to the finals. All right, more with Chris. I'm here with the man that drove in the RBI game winner. Has his shirt on now. What That's were right. you looking for in that at bat? Man, I was looking for something over the plate. Be short to it. I knew if once Bray stole that bag, we had a chance to win it. I was in an opportunity last uh, last game against him. Bases loaded up, but ground out to third. It's part of it, though. Thank God for another chance. What was that like, the mindset, knowing what happened yesterday, taking into that at bat? We're hungry. We knew we knew with Will on the mound that we were coming out. He's our best guy. We need to rally a few hits behind him, and we did. What's it like having Landon Sims on the mound to close it out for you? Absolutely incredible. Thank God he's on our team. <laughs> <Thank God. laughs> Describe for me, you have the dog pile in the outfield. What this moment in front of these fans on this stage? Best moment of my life, for sure. I won't forget it, but I knew walking to the plate that I was going to do it. Uh, Said a little prayer to the side, and I, he felt, I felt God with me. Some possible moments next week as well as you face Vandy. What can you tell me about facing another SEC team? They're a great group. Um, they got their arms. Timely hitting and wins leap, uh, late in the season, so we'll see what happens. We'll go celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Vanderbilt won it all in 2014 and 2019. Mississippi State has yet to win it. But the SEC is set for what should be an outstanding College World Series final starting Monday night.